Hey guys, welcome back. It's Neon. I'm here with Geeky Sparkles. Hello. And we're going to talk about the hypocrisy of these uh, pop culture blogs in regards to Game of Thrones versus Star Wars Episode Nine and The Last Jedi. Okay. Uh, before we do that, thank you so much to everyone who has subscribed to the channel over the last couple days. It's really helped us a lot. Yep. Uh, please, 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 if you have not subscribed to Clownfish TV and you want to get more content from us, uh, please subscribe. It definitely helps us on YouTube, helps us grow the channel, helps us make more content for you. And, right. Uh, you know, we're gonna gives us something to do. No. Gives us something to do because <laughs> we make more videos. Uh, but we are going to talk about this because this is a really interesting situation. Now, disclaimer. Um, I don't think you've ever seen Game of Thrones. No. You? Okay, I've seen a couple episodes, and I have to be honest, I didn't really get into it because I knew it was going to be one of these shows that, like, you know, it's a huge time sink. Like, you have to watch every episode, and I just didn't have the time to watch it. You couldn't give it the attention it deserved. I did not. Yeah, right. And I have to tell you, I am so very glad I didn't get into this show because it sounds like they dropped the ball at the end uh you know laces out i mean they completely just have destroyed the show from what people who do watch the show are telling me of what we're reading online uh people are colossally pissed about this season of of game of thrones they said there's character assassination going on you know literal and mm -hmm. figuratively um uh -uh, they're the vocal minority <laughs> well okay so we want to talk about this because it seems like the pop culture blogs are actually on the side of the fandom for Game of Thrones because they're fans. They're fans of Game of Thrones. Now, when it comes to Star Wars and that nasty old trilogy, uh, yeah, with all the misogynists who don't like the new right, movies, the same kinds of complaints that fans had about Star Wars were largely ignored, oftentimes mocked. Got called names. If you didn't Got like Last names. Jedi, it's because you were a misogynist, a, a racist, uh, insert, you know, sexist, you know, insert your ist here kind of thing. Uh, I don't know where yeah, you're, you're putting you your ist. You have to be careful about putting, where you put your ist because you can get in trouble for that. You could get a disease. But, um, uh, or you, could get, you can get in trouble on the yeah. internet. So what I'm saying is it was really funny just because you didn't like it. And you might not have liked it for something that had nothing to do with gender. Doesn't matter. You are a misogynist, woman-hating, whatever. Um, because you didn't like it. But if you don't like certain things with Game of Thrones, if that's you, okay. If you don't it, like, we'll give you a pass. Yep, if you don't like certain things with Game of Thrones. Now, there is a petition out there to remake uh, Season 8 of Game of Thrones. Now, this is not the first time this has happened. This has actually happened a couple of times with uh, you know pop culture um, uh, phenomenons that maybe didn't live up to expectation. There was a few years ago a petition to remake The Last Jedi. And the, oh, the man babies are trying to remake The Last Jedi, but it's the real fans that wanted to, re you know, fix Game of Thrones. Right. right? Yes. So uh, Star Wars, if you remember correctly, you know, um, there was a petition to remake it. Of course, that would never happen. That would never happen. But uh, yeah, these pop culture blogs basically mocked mm -hmm. the fandom for even daring to suggest that the movie not only wasn't that good, but that it warranted a, a redo, a re-roll of the dice. And we're going to talk now about uh, you know some of the, the the differences here. Like even you know Seth Rogen gets in here. He's like, I don't understand what you're trying to do. We've got Frank Oz who's like, why are you raising money to remake a movie? You know, mm -hmm. we had Ryan Johnson who was flat out no, Ryan Johnson. Uh, insulting the fans because people felt that passionately about it. Fast forward to today, Game of Thrones. People feel very passionately that their characters, uh, these characters that they've come to love and thought they knew have been uh, their their uh, personalities, their character has been assassinated, you know, just to shock people. In fact, I believe, um, I believe that they even use the term uh, uh, subvert, subverting here on Vox, and Vox is very much against what they've done with Daenerys, uh, that they've subverted uh, expectations, and some Game of Thrones fans think it was barely explained or built. Yeah, Game of Thrones fans are really fucking mad. Uh, get some Game of Thrones fans, hi. Uh, I think Daenerys' decision to burn King's Landing was bold subversion. Subversion. Uh, we've heard that before in relation to The Last Jedi. Right? I'm, I'm really lost, but okay. 
No, I'm saying they kept saying with The Last Jedi, the best thing about The Last Jedi was that it subverted your expectations, that that was a good thing. Well, no, subverting expectations of The Last Jedi means it underwhelmed, and it was like, you expected a good movie, and you got that. And you got, you no, got I, but a, I'm oh, just trying to wrap my head. I mean, no, no, it's not saying that, 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 that the fans aren't right about the Game of Thrones. We're not no, saying no, no. that. We're just saying that, you know, if it's as bad as everybody's saying, and we're hearing it from a lot of people, yeah. then yeah, it's probably bad. But what we're saying is, it's d the same arguments they're making for the Game of Thrones people had for the Last Jedi. But the Last Jedi arguments were were just because they're you know racist, you know right. misogynist trolls. But the people who want to remake Game of Thrones are because of the real fans, right? Who because care about the the the, the content, the source material. Yeah, just compare two articles by Box. Uh, this one, they're 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 furious about how Daenerys has been treated, what they've turned Daenerys into. Uh, compared to The Last Jedi, it came thrillingly close to upending Star Wars, but lost its nerve. But they completely ruined yeah, Luke. Almost. So, well, they say that Daenerys has been completely ruined. But so that's, that's okay. what I'm saying. It's okay. I mean, we're, we're, we all they all agree this. And I mean, there's a lot of people, on uh, doesn't matter which side you're leaning towards, who don't like what they've done with uh, Game of Thrones. Mm -hmm. And it sounds like they have good reason to feel that way. Yeah. Um, Again, I am so glad I'm not we don't invested watch the time in this but show. But the same arguments can be made for uh, The Last Jedi. And the difference is, is because The Last Jedi is being touted by the pop culture media as, a, you know, the the progressive Star Wars that everybody needs. And if you don't like it, there's something wrong with you and all this other stuff. People are mad for the same damn reasons. That's what we're trying to say. Right. Same reasons. Right. But it's okay to, it's okay to hate on Game of Thrones, the entire internet. Is, is hating on Game of Thrones, but if you hated on Star Wars The Last Jedi, which did a lot of the same kinds of, uh, you know, character character assassinations Assassination, yeah. and WTF moments that just uh -huh. did not jive with the rest of the series. That's another complaint with Game of Thrones from what we're hearing is a lot of what's being done this last season, you know, doesn't mesh with the rest of the series. Right. It, it's totally out of it's left It's like field. been one thing and now suddenly something different. Right. It's been super one way. And that's what happened with Star Wars. It was great forever. And then all of a sudden it just went, you it know. It was not great then anymore. This, this isn't even, I mean, they didn't, to be fair though, with The Last Jedi, they, they even admit they didn't even, you know, compare notes to make sure it was cohesive. Yeah, yeah. So I'm like, and that's obvious. <laughs> you know, so, so, you know, it's just, it's really interesting to see the hypocrisy of these blogs, uh, you know, again, um, because it's something they care about. We've seen this before, right. like when they talked about the Buffy reboot, you know, like it was okay to reboot uh, any other TV show from the 80s. And if the you old... didn't like it, you were a sexist, misogynist, right, right. homophobe, whatever. But if you touch Buffy, because Buffy meant something to these bloggers, then that was awful. Like, why does Buffy need to be remade? Uh, and they were going to remake Buffy with uh, an African American lead. You'd think that a lot of these bloggers uh, would be like, "Yeah, good." Would be yeah, like, "Yes, well, let's let's do this." Uh, they weren't. They were freaking out because it was theirs. It was, it was their theirs. thing that they cared about. So, so that's what we're having with Game of Thrones. It's, it's, it's something that people have invested a lot of time into, mm -hmm. a lot of uh, you know emotion, a lot of whatever into, and now they're changing it for no reason whatsoever, it sounds like. I mean, it's like it's, out of left field, just like last yeah, night I did. Right, and again, I can't comment because I've seen a couple episodes. I haven't uh, wanted to sink the time into the show because I've gotten burned so many times on shows. We, you know, we've had this happen so many times where we've watched a show for years and that just completely jumps the shark. You know, and it was Doctor uh, Who. Doctor Who. <laughs> Doctor Who. Every episode, Doctor, literally Doctor Who. And the reason I made the videos I made a couple months ago is Doctor Who was like the only show I watched every week mm -hmm. live. Like. I didn't watch any other TV, but by God, I had that hour every week to watch Doctor Who. Even when we Who. didn't have uh, the, the direct TV anymore, you actually paid the whatever, $3 I, an episode yes. or whatever, just to make sure you watch Doctor Who. Yeah, and so I, I felt like personally offended. Like, this is the only TV show I watch anymore. And yeah, I would. Like, we, we decided to get rid of direct TV. We cut the cord, but we couldn't get Doctor Who on Hulu. So I was buying the episodes. It's called Hulu. Irony. No, yeah, no, no right. <laughs> <laughs> So I was buying the episodes on uh, Amazon Prime just to be able to watch them as soon as they came out. That's how much I love Doctor Who. And then to watch them just completely like burn the show to oh, the ground. Oh, and before anybody whines, it says, because you don't like women, you're misogynist. It wasn't because it was a female Oh, doctor. bullshit. I actually it was because the writing was complete balls. 
Yeah, and I was actually, you know, and I remember we had the conversation. I was more okay with there being a female doctor. Oh, I was the one who hated it. Then you were. I'm I, like, this is stupid. You're just pandering. Right, and I was and like, I'm a woman. Because I knew, I knew, you know, the last Capaldi's uh, last season was kind of meh. And I'm like, it was meh. And, and I'm like, maybe, maybe bringing a new showrunner and a, a female doctor will give it a kick in the butt and the show will be great again and not just okay. But even with I that, knew what it was going to be. <laughs> so. But even with Capaldi, like Capaldi, with it being boring, I still watched every damn episode of Doctor Who. I'd love to show that much. And then to, I, I couldn't even finish season 11. I did, I, we did watch together. We watched the New Year's uh, mm -hmm. special. I got about halfway through season 11 i'm like my god i am i'm just i'm bored yeah i am bored and that was my biggest complaint but this isn't with about him. that so you can get off there boy you're really no, upset still. what i'm saying yeah it still hurts but what i'm Apparently. saying is i can understand sinking years and years and years into a tv show only to have them fumble the ball at the very end at the very end yeah i mean like the last few episodes they're just completely laces out yeah. um so anyway it's so weird though because now um now that there's uh let's see where am i going here okay i really what prompted this whole thing was an article uh from io9 a couple of days ago where you know now bob Iger has actually made comments that you know he thinks fans are gonna love oh yeah I said the rise thing, yeah. of skywalker because he's like we're gonna because they know they lost a hell of a lot of money on solo oh, no but they keep saying no it's just a vocal minority it's only a few people vocal minorities do not tank a franchise right and that's that's what we tried to get across you know now we actually like solo mm -hmm. uh and we said the video and some people took it they totally took it the wrong way we said look i you know we believe the the, the boycott did have some effect but i'm like to get the numbers the sheer uh, amount of of seats that were not filled for a star wars movie it takes the general public not caring anymore right the general public didn't like what was going on with star wars so i mean it, it you know people are getting mad about that i'm like but i don't know why you're mad about that because it's actually playing into what you want so uh the general public just doesn't care anymore no so now they're trying to get people excited about star wars again and uh what they're more or less promising the fans is we're going to return to form you know, they had a uh, callback to, you know, obviously the original trilogy with being the rise of Skywalker, you know, uh, we had a callback with Palpatine, mm -hmm. you know, you're looking, you know, they had the Death Star or what was left of the Death Star. <laughs> yeah. Well, how many Death Stars? I mean, I mean, Death Star is like every, it wasn't the yeah, last one, but it's like every movie. It's like, but, come on. But they're trying really hard, I think, to get people like, okay, guys, just please come back. Please come back. We're going to fix it. We're going to make it better. Um... Now that is actually a smart business decision. That's a smart decision to win back the fandom, especially with like the whole franchise is on the line. I think with episode nine, we've talked about that before. But not everybody's happy because some people, oh, it's Charles. Some people think that uh, you know Disney is kowtowing to these these uh, fans and that they they should not give fans what they want because it concerns them. Wait, wait. Let's not give the fans what they want. Let's not give the fans what they want. Do you because, like to make money? Uh, no. Well, okay. So here is uh, Charles from io9. We've done articles with Charles before. Um, and uh, he's concerned. He's co Now, he admits he's a very casual Star Wars fan. But he's concerned that we're going to give in to the uh, fandom. Give in to the fandom in what way? To make better movies? Darn, that sucks. I know, right? <laughs> like, you know. And uh, there, this is a whole conversation that's going on in, in pop culture right now. And we'll talk more about that after we talk about this but the last jedi sent a message to the star wars fandom that at least from a filmmaker's perspective the skywalker story was ready to come to a close it was a bold pivot from the nostalgic it, bold, it was stupid nostalgic direction the force awakens yeah, appeared to be taken the reason it did that was because apparently uh ryan johnson didn't get with jj abrams to make sure their stories meshed and that they had a cohesive story he kind of just did whatever the hell he wanted and now they have to clean it up is yeah, basically yeah. what is, they're saying nicely They've got, been saying nicely. I got the vibe that Ryan Johnson watched Star Wars and Empire once or twice, like 20 years ago, and then decided to go his own way. So it wasn't anyway. a bold pivot. No. It was It was a big mistake. Anyway. And unsurprisingly, it left many hardcore fans of the original trilogy beside themselves with beside displeasure. Beside themselves with displeasure. Yeah, that's I right. I thought it was Russian bots. I, I sat and Russian cried bots. for two weeks because I was beside myself with disple displeasure. Oh, God. Uh... For those of us, let's say, more casual Star Wars fans who have long felt that the Skywalker's overwhelming dominance in Star Wars media is one of the franchise's more okay, glaring but, drawbacks. But if you're a casual fan, why would you care that it's a, it's, a, it's called it's a Skywalker? It is a Skywalker. It's a Skywalker saga. All of it's about Skywalkers. That's kind of the point. 
You know what I'm saying? Why would a right. casual fan even care? Uh, I don't want. I don't want. I don't want that much Superman. In my Superman movies. You don't want the uh, why? Yeah. Why would you so, want Superman? And Superman. Movies? So the last Jedi was a promise of something fresher, something less encumbered by the larger fandom's collective emotional baggage. No, it wasn't they advertised it like they did any other movie? You're just saying this in, at, at, after you've seen it. Right. Then came this year's Star Wars celebration. Rise of Skywalker's first trailer title announced, but we were there for that. Yeah, we were there. And that dusty, maniacal laugh suggesting it, uh, it'd be Kylo Ren in the First Order's best interest to double their efforts. While there's sure to be an interesting explanation as to how Palpatine will return, his presence in the Rise of Skywalker, much like the implied elevation of the Skywalker name, suggests the larger return to the status quo. Right, because the status quo is what people want. The status quo is what sell. Why the heck would you change something that you people expect? They go to they go to Star Wars films because they're expecting to see more of what they they wanted, and they're acting like this is a bad thing. You know, it, as a casual fan, well, we really give a flying shit what a casual fan says. You're a casual fan. You go if you feel like it. You know what I'm saying? You're not like a big fan. Yeah, basically, if you when, read, when, when. if you read this, his his uh, point is, um, he really thinks that that Ray is going to get shortchanged after two installments about Ray's rise to prominence at the center of a story that was distinctly her own. I don't get that vibe at all. No, she's basically just she's there. No, she's, I don't get that vibe for this movie though because when they have the trailer, she's mostly it's mostly Ray. It's Ray, mostly Ray, and she's you know they have her doing these amazing acrobatics and slicing through you know, ships and stuff. And then they even said, they basically are saying it's your fight now. They have like the, 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 uh, over the voiceover with Luke yeah. saying it's your fight now. So I don't get the vibe that Ray is going to be marginalized. Do you? No, no, no. Um, so, but the title, the rise of Skywalker based on the title alone feels almost like a kind of capitulation to those who bemoan the fact that Luke hasn't been the primary focus, but we already established that these nine movies are supposed to be a Skywalker saga. So we know going into it that this, might be new characters, but it's the right. Skywalker saga. This, so why the hell would you think it wouldn't be the Skywalker it, saga? And this is the last episode of the Skywalker. The the, this <laughs> is the sorry. last episode of the Skywalker saga. But no, see what happens. Like you, like you can't win. Like if you, you know, they piss the fans off. They know they piss fan off, the fandom off. Um, Disney, look, they're concerned about money at the end of the day, and they know they lost a shit ton of money on Solo. Yeah, they could argue until the cows come home. They yeah, did. They, they lost did. it. And, and and they're going to have to do something to get the fans back. And not just the casual fans. They want the actual hardcore fans who love Star Wars, who the spend the money. The ones that buy lots of merchandise. To go see it ten times. You know, that's what they that's want. That's what they want. They want those fans back. They, you know, they, they want the casual fans, too. But to be honest, they care about the fans that are actually going to give them money. Yeah, and and here's the thing, because most Star Wars movies, the reason they do so well is it's repeat viewings. Uh, the Last Jedi literally is the only Star Wars movie I have ever seen one time and mm -hmm. have no desire to ever see again. We didn't even buy it. It's the only Star Wars movie we have never bought on home video. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, maybe someday I'll feel differently, but right now I'm it. I'm so angry. Like we've even bought Solo. We bought mm -hmm. Solo. We bought. Rogue One. I've I seen like Solo Rogue like three or four times. Um, you know, I, Rogue One, I've seen like three or four times. Uh, Force Awakens, I've seen three or four times. Last Jedi was such a kick to the balls. You well, know? I don't have balls, but yeah. Well, it's kicked to the fandom bits, whatever. Why are you assuming the fandom's male? The fangina. Are you assuming the fandom's gender? I am. Um, It's a kick to the fangina. Then. Fangina. The fangina. The uh, that I don't want to. I don't. Bulginous. Yeah, I have no it's desire to, to see the bulginous. So this is what I think Game of Thrones Thrones fans are are feeling. But now yeah, we understand what you're feeling, though. Right. So I just want to make sure you guys understand this. We get you. The people that you've been calling names for not liking the you know Star Wars, they understand how you feel. Yeah. Now there is a whole discussion. Uh, coming up, you know, and, and I, I think it was uh, um, Chuck Wendig who was fired from oh God. <laughs> Star Wars comics was going on some tirade on Twitter. Uh, I didn't catch the whole thing, but he basically was like, you know, as soon as you start kowtowing to a fandom, um, you know, you're doomed. And there's been a lot of talk about that because people were like, oh my God, you're changing Sonic the Hedgehog because a couple of people complained. It was more than a couple of people. It was more than a couple of people. Bad. Thing is, it's like you can't, I, I get, I see both sides of it. I really do. I mean, you can't, you know, you can't please everyone, and you can't just, uh, you know, kowtow to, you know, if you have a story you want to tell, you can't always change it to please to please people. However, when you have an established property like Star Wars, you can't pull Last Jedi. It just, I mean, you, you could if you gradually worked into it after a couple movies. You cannot pull Last Jedi. You just yeah. can't do it, and you can't take the most beloved character in the whole Star Wars franchise. 
Well, you already killed, you killed Han, and now you take Luke, and then you, first of all, you don't put Han, Luke, and Leia together at all, and then you flip and pussified Luke and did what you did to Luke. You just don't do that. He's like the most beloved character in Star Wars, and you flip and completely ruined Luke. He completely yeah. was opposite, just like the Game of Thrones character, and, but that's, that, that's okay to get mad about, but if you get mad about yeah. Luke, you're just a misogynist. But it's just, it's so funny, this double standard. Again, it depends on whether or not it means anything to you, but I think... You know, these people, well, beyond the fact that, you know, uh, these pop culture media outlets uh, like Vox, like BuzzFeed, Vice are, are failing terribly because they're completely out of touch with the fandom. And at the end of the day, it's the fandom that drives the sales. And if you're making movies and shows that nobody likes just to be clever... Um, that's not really good business. And I'm talking, that's not talking, good business. We're talking you know? the fandom at large. We're not talking the fandom you see on Twitter or social media. No. We're talking about the fandom as a whole. Because I think... Casual fans. Right. What you you're know? seeing... I don't think there's casual fans. There's really, there's really hardcore fans that just don't hang out on Twitter and social media. Most people so, don't hang out. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So, like, you have this, like, extremist on either side, um, you know, fighting out about, you know, Star Wars. Meanwhile, there's millions and millions of people all around the world who have their opinions on it, and, and they're, they're showing it with their, with their money and how they they respond to these movies and if they go or not and by blaming it on the, the few people you hear on the internet on either side is is kind of you know shortchanging the fandom because it is a much larger entity than that and it's like you know if your sales are shit it's probably because the fandom as a whole didn't like it yeah it's not because somebody on twitter said something that made oh it turned everybody off no i doubt it highly it's because the fandom is they, no, you're not getting my money. I'm not going. I don't want to see it. Yeah, and I think this is why they're they're putting the time into redoing Sonic the Hedgehog because the Sonic the Hedgehog fandom. I mean, they put up with a lot of shit. They put up with you know subpar games for years. Like Sonic the Hedgehog has not put out a truly great game in like 15, 20 years. Mm -hmm. But the fandom's still very, very strong What's online. Left? <laughs> What's left yeah. of it? Uh, you know, they're very strong online. They're very vocal, and they're basically like, we're not going to support this movie. So they're telling. Uh, they're telling Paramount and Sega right up front, like, you're not going to make money on this movie. We're not going to go see this movie because it looks like a, a, an atrocity. Mm -hmm. So it is in their best interest. If they interest. listened, at least. If they had, yeah, they listened. And, you know, maybe they can maybe they can pull it off and, and you know, give people something somewhat decent. But, um, it, you know, they're saying, well, don't cave to the fans. I'm like, well, who the hell do you think is buying the tickets? That's Who's right. buying the merchandise? It's like, you know, you know? yeah. It's like, if, if you, like you use the McDonald's analogy all the time. If everybody's asking for a special sandwich at McDonald's and they get rid of it, don't give it to what the gunk people want. Why? So they don't give you money? I mean, it's like you can either make money or lose money. Your choice. The you know? Arch Deluxe, one of the biggest failures of all time because McDonald's, well, actually, I like the Arch Deluxe. I, I thought it was very tasty and I was very mad when they took it away. But anyway, for the most part, it was like a big failure because McDonald's didn't really understand who their audience was. They had this really fancy adult sandwich, and then they tried to tell everybody, well, we're growing up, McDonald's is growing up, and we're not going to have, you know, Big Macs and stuff. We're going to have this fancy schmancy sandwich, and people are like, hell no. Yeah. That's just, not what we want. That's not what we go to McDonald's for. We just want a double cheeseburger. And, you know, and, you, know, and not... you wouldn't be where you are this many years later if you didn't have fans. Yeah. So, you know, why you should listen to the fans? Because the fans have given you this many years, this much money. They've kept you where you are. Um, of course, you want to keep the fandom, you know, happy. And, you know, uh, you know, you can't make everybody happy, obviously. There's no way. But you want to truly try to make the majority happy. I'm just saying. Yeah, that's just good business. It's just um, smart. It's but, just it works. But, uh, you know, again, some people just don't. They don't really care about the business side of things no uh, they don't seem to care where the money comes from and uh they're going to be really uh shocked when they realize that the blogs they're working for uh no longer make money yeah because no one's to hear those opinions they're, <laughs> out of, <laughs> they're out of work so uh anything else you want to add to this nope it's longer we're, than i thought we're gonna end on sonic's uh blue ass in his uh his thighs his man thighs why do i want to see that i i don't know some people might want to see Not that. me. Okay, so uh, please subscribe to Clownfish TV for more pop culture news, views, rants, gaming videos, art videos, and more. This has been Neon and Geeky. Bye. Hey guys, thanks for watching Clownfish TV. Please consider supporting the channel. Go to clownfishsupport.com. That's clownfishsupport.com. And if you want to join our community, go to clownfishtalk.com. That's clownfishtalk.com. Please subscribe, ring the bell for notifications. We will talk to you next time.